Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This has been an episode people have been asking for for quite some time. We're going to be taking a look at a rehousing in the care for my Rhesus Walkinary or my Velvet Spider. I got this one back in January of 2022 from Tom Patterson at uh, Hardcore Arachnids and I didn't do a video for it and I didn't want to talk about it until I raised this thing up a little bit. I have this thing about people who pick up a spider, immediately tell folks how to keep it even though they haven't really kept it yet. So I wanted to make sure I had a couple of years under my belt before we showed it off while well, we're here. So what we'll do is talk about how I kept it, take a look at it. Billy's got some good shots of it and uh, it was not an easy thing to do because this is a still quite a tiny spider. They're very slow growing, but that means they live longer. So that makes them kind of cool. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at Rhesus walkinary or the Greek velvet spider. All right. So at long last, we're going to rehouse my Rhesus walkinary or my Greek ladybird spider, or also known as the velvet spider. This is a species that lives in the Eastern Mediterranean. I got this one and I'll show some footage up here. I got this one from Tom Patterson back in January of 2022. And at that time we shot a long video. It just became, I've mentioned this before, the video was a debacle and I never ended up posting it. However, we got the footage here of this little guy. And at that time it was about, I would say a 16th of an inch or so, really tiny spider. It was kind of freaked out, didn't know a lot about the Aresis species. But my God, have I fallen in love with this one? He's actually put on, or she's actually put on some size. And now we're going to finally put her into, or him into, I don't know the sex yet, its new home. Now, a note about these guys, the ones that get the brightly colored abdomens are the males. They have the orange on the abdomens. The females do not have that color. And as far as size is concerned, females get to be about an inch and a half or so, or 3.81 centimeters, and males are just a bit smaller than that. So what I'm going to do is show off this here. What we originally put it into, as you could have already seen from the video, is this vial. And now you can see, well, that, oh, he's a little fast little booger now. He's hiding in there. But what I did when I originally set it up, bone dry substrate, a uh, little bit of a pinch. I had a pinch of moss in there, but I think I pulled it out for some reason, or I tried to rearrange the thing. At one point, I thought it was dead. I hadn't seen it for a while, so I pulled out the moss. But I put in a little fake leaf so they could web around. These are guys that web in sandy soil. At the bottom, they'll use the moss is to make little tunnels and web up, and then they web up towards the top. And as you can see, something different from tarantulas, these guys tend to work the little desiccated carcasses into the webbing. So that's one of the reasons I really want to rehouse this one now is A, it's gotten a little bit bigger and needs something a little bit bigger, but B, all those little nasty carcasses. And oh, 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 why are you avoiding them? There he is right there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get that while I'll try to hold it. Super steady and there he goes. But this one just molted again, it's finally put on some decent size. And what we're gonna put it into is one of the acrylic type enclosures here. Now what I've got in on the bottom, again, bone dry substrate. And I have to ask, uh, I have to thank my buddy, Basin79, who has, if you haven't checked him out, and I'm gonna encourage people to do so, has an awesome YouTube channel. He's been around for a long, long time and an awesome Instagram channel where he posts feeding vids and a lot of beautiful macro photography on Instagram. So definitely encourage you to check him out. But he's somebody that if I read that he says, this is how you keep them, uh, that's how I keep them. And when I was doing the research on these, I saw him on the board. He said to keep them bone dry, which I'll tell you from keeping tarantulas for many, many years, that is really difficult for me to do, but I did it and the spider has thrived. So what we have here, a mixture of cocoa fiber, peat and sand on the bottom. I've got, again, the little plastic plant in there, leaves to kind of allow it to go underneath it and a little pinch of dry sphagnum moss. I may put it even a little bit more in there before we actually do this, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna go in there and hide and then start webbing up this area and that's where it will hunt from. And these guys are a nice little size for this, good ventilation. Let me get another little pinch of sphagnum in there. Whoop, all right. Another little sprig of sphagnum. Right in there. These tops sometimes drive me nuts because I have a metal table and they stick to the table or I get them upside down. So always, and the other thing with these, I've got to warn people because I did finally hear from somebody that this happened. The spider lost three legs because the spider tried to climb out and they dropped it down. The spider got its legs caught. So always be careful. They kind of freak me out with the magnets, but they're good for dry species. I don't particularly like them for the moisture dependent species only because the ventilation, they tend to dry out super fast, but it'll be great for this little guy. So what we're gonna try to do is drag this guy out. So hopefully Billy can get some footage. If not, I have some feeding footage that I just got yesterday that we're gonna use to kind of show him off. Ooh. 
Oh, my God. These, I have to say, a lot of folks, I'll put them up here under the light. These have become all the rage lately, these and jumping spiders. And for a while, it's like, I don't get what the big deal is, to be honest. Like, they, they look cool, but it wasn't until I got one and saw the little guy that I was just enamored with him. Oh, I try to twist this. There we go. Oh. I really almost want to drop some of this in, if not for the carcasses. So what I may do is a little maintenance on this because it's bone dry. Let me just see if I can pull some of the carcasses out. There's one of the molts. Yeah, this is one that I was freaked out about because it was so tiny at first. Now, when I first got it, the fruit flies I had were actually larger than the spider. And I was a little concerned, but it took them down, no problem. They'll take down larger prey. They will kind of come out, bite it, and then retreat back to their burrows. It's adorable. And then when the thing's struggling and starts to calm down, they come out and they start eating. You get that? Did you get some good shots of that? Because I may just drop yes. this whole thing in there. Yeah, you can see all the little, there's a carcass. You dirty little dude. And they kind of, I found out this is what they do. They tend to line their burrows with the carcasses. So other spiders come around, they're like, heck with this noise. This guy's a maniac. It's like the <laughs> creeper on Jeepers Creepers with the <laughs> Cathedral of Death. But it just looks so messy. I, I don't know. Do I put him in by himself or? Uh I'm torn. I almost want to just drop the whole thing. These moments of indecision. I, I almost think it's worth it to just drop the whole thing in there. What do you think? Billy's in charge now. What do you think? What? No. You're, you're in charge. No, Billy's big I'm spiders. never in charge. What are you talking about? You're in, you're in charge. Oh, oh, oh. Well, get some more shots of him before we put him in. Now, uh, as we're trying to get some pretty shots of this one, because I did want to kind of show it off. They're, they're almost bulletproof husbandry-wise. I mean, anything they keep dry, as long as you keep it fed. I did not overfeed them. I gave them rather – I honestly gave them larger meals, and then usually every other week or so, I usually feed slings more often. But the stuff that I was feeding was so big that I figured I could get away with feeding them less often. Growth rate, it can take them two to three years. Males, two to three years to mature. Same thing with females. And males can live three to four years – Females, four to five years plus. I talked to somebody that had a female that was six and a half years old. So that's a pretty long living spider. So I'm honestly, I mean, if you get the male, you get the nice orange booty, which is beautiful, but they will eventually start wandering around looking for a lady. I'm going to go ahead and drop this down in here. If you get the female, it's less beautiful, but she'll be with you longer. So it's, I don't know. It's almost like pamphlebedia uh, tarantulas. All right. So what we're going to do is, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Nah. You know what? There we go. Up, oh, up. Oh, it's out. No, uh, this didn't work well. There we go. There we go. All right. I almost want to put this back in with a little bit of the webbing on it. Let me see if I can pull some of this stuff off. Now, temperatures while I'm going ahead and doing this, this is all not planned, obviously, because I was trying to decide how to go about it. But, oh, look at those little carcasses. All that is is little dead. What I was feeding them as I spit all over myself. Dear God, this video is going to be a mess. What I was feeding them the start was first I had some flightless fruit flies, but then I ran out of those. So I was feeding them red runner nymphs, the super tiny ones. I kind of stun them, like crush your heads, drop them in so they'd still be wiggling. It would come out and grab them, which was so fun to watch. And now they're eating, he's, he or she is eating larger red runner nymphs. There we go. Stick that right in there. So we got some webbing. And then we put this top back on. Now temperatures, temperatures, room temp. Oh, oh there he is. Cute little guy. I'm trying to move with it. I'll put it down here so you can see it. Temperatures, I keep them room temperature. So anywhere in the high 60s to mid 70s in the winter time or so in the summertime. Billy does not have an admirable job here. This I do not envy you at all. I'm sorry, enviable job. In the wintertime, they're high 60s, uh, mid 70s, low 70s. In the summertime, it gets up to 80, 85 in here at times, and it's done fine with just that. And again, as far as humidity, as much as it's going to pain a lot of people out there, believe me, it freaked me out. Do not put moisture in. I don't even spray these down. I've heard some people say, 
oh, I swim down river so often as per the advice I got from Basin 79 when I was looking up, he kept his bone dry. I kept mine bone dry. It is done wonderfully bone dry. I have had zero issues. They get the moisture from the prey. And I know we hear that a lot when it comes to tarantulas. And we know for a fact the tarantulas will drink from dishes. Well, in this case, it's something you don't want to mess with because they are not ones that like high humidity. And I have spoken to a couple people who have asked me, hey, how do I keep the spider? I had one die on me and I found out they were keeping them super moist and it died. So just a heads up there. So awesome little spiders. I get it now. I'm planning on getting some more. I know that at, at first, I just I'm, I was so into tarantulas, and I kept jumping spiders, and I was branching out into some of the huntsmen, the other ones, and these guys just look cute, but not necessarily my thing. They are definitely my thing now. You can just back off if it's not getting good footage because I know the lighting isn't great. It's going to be a fun one to edit. All right, so there we go. Aresis wakaneri, the velvet spider, Greek velvet spider, the Greek ladybird spider. Awesome pet, easy to keep. They are pretty pricey, but they are worth it because I know some folks when you get the quote unquote true spiders, they don't live as long. These guys live quite a while. It takes a while to grow them up, but they're hardy as heck. So they're excellent to pick up as little teeny slings and to grow up. So again, the trick with these is to give them some spaces to hide and to web in. Dry sphagnum moss is the way to go. If you have moist, I've had people ask me, well, I have some moist stuff. Should I put that in it? Let it dry out. They do not like moisture. I wouldn't want to chance that. Mine has done perfectly well bone dry, just living off the prey items or the moisture in the prey items that it eats. As I mentioned in the video, they eat very well and they're fun to watch hunt because these guys will come up and grab stuff that is much larger than themselves. Usually what they do is they bite it, they back away a little bit, wait for it to squirm a little bit. When it starts squirming, they come up, they bite it again and they do it until the thing finally dies and then they drag it into their burrows to consume it before taking the corpse and webbing it into their actual home, which I think is kind of neat and a little bit creepy, but hey, they're adorable, so who can knock it? So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, I appreciate it. Click the circle up there. I'm going to put a video by my buddy Basin79 over here. Maybe put a link to his channel up there. Please check it out. He's a good dude. He's been around for a while. He's got some great stuff up there. As always, you take the time to comment. I'll take the time to respond. It can just take me a few days. Guys, stay safe. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll catch you all next time.